Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Locked On Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite team in the Bay Area. Normally, JD and I would talk shit for like two minutes and stuff, but we can't do that today. We have we have the most important guest we've ever had on the podcast in two and a half years. If you don't know by now, we were big fans of drafting this guy by the Sharks and a little bit of fortunate circumstances when he got sent back home uh, because it meant that we could reach out and get him on the podcast. We have today with us the one, the only, the future of the San Jose Sharks, William Eklund. I hope that's not too lofty of a title. How are you, William? <laughs> How's it going, William? How's it going? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. It's uh, it's always fun doing doing these kind of interviews when you're back home in Sweden and we're on the West Coast because it's we just got out of bed and you're thinking about bedtime <laughs> bedtime probably yeah. soon. I'm still feeling the jet lag though. So, it's kind oh of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, because you you were in San Jose for basically what from July on, right? When they you came yeah. out for rookie, like two months, two and a half, something like that. So yeah, you feel it. What? Uh, yeah, I mean, jet lag sucks. Let Let's go back to the beginning though. You're obviously in this draft class. Did you know San Jose was going to take you? Did you think maybe Buffalo could take you? I know that there was lots of different spots. Kind of what what was your thinking going into the draft? Where did you think you were going to go? I had no idea, actually. I see some list stuff. And, uh, of course, there's nothing you try to focus on, but I have no idea. <laughs> do, you, do you read a lot about your stuff heading into the draft? I'm trying to not, actually. Uh, but sometimes you come across it yeah that's fair um did you did you interview with a lot of the teams at the top or was there only a few that were sniffing around i think i interviewed a lot uh, of them that helped here yeah did you have a feeling like when you interviewed i assumed you interviewed with doug wilson and doug wilson jr did you have like a good vibes or anything like that coming from them yeah yeah like i think it was a good feeling all around it yeah uh, just, just from the start, like they were really easy to talk with the the whole crew there. So, just like a joyful feeling. Yeah, yeah, it was good. That's good, and and obviously your English is is quite good and stuff like that. Have you you didn't need a translator or anything? Have you spoke English since you were being a little kid? Uh, yeah, we learned it, learned it in school here. So, oh, okay, yeah, nice. That that probably makes it that probably makes the whole process and coming to North America just a little bit easier, right? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> And then I guess coming to the Sharks, they have who Eric Carlson and okay. How do you say okay? We need to ask you this because you are actually <laughs> Swedish. Is it Jonathan Dahlin or Jonathan Dahlen? I say if you in Sweden, Dahlen. 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 You can say that. <laughs> okay, so we've been saying it completely wrong for like two oh. years now. Did you did you know any of those Swedish guys before uh, before getting drafted? I didn't know. Oh, obviously, didn't know Eric Carlson. Yeah. You see him and Dolly too. Yeah, I know uh, how good he's been in the hockey fans in Sweden. So, but I don't. I didn't know them as a person. Uh, so it was the first time meeting them, and yeah, it was, it was real fun. Is is Eric Carlson like a hero, a, a, a mythical figure in Sweden? And so walking into a team room with him probably would have been kind of wild, right? Yeah, it was so. Obviously, we watched him do some sick plays in the NHL. So, uh, yeah, it was real cool. It seems like he swears to himself a lot. Can you confirm if Carlson is just constantly swearing to himself? <laughs> I think every player has, has something to that as they always do. So maybe <laughs> have has something there. <laughs> do you? So when you're on the ice, obviously I'm from Canada. He JD's American, and and, and you're Swedish and stuff like that. When you're on the ice. You're gonna speak American or Amer? Oh my God! <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna speak English um, to the English guys. But when you're out there on a line, say with with Dalen or Carlson, something like that, do you automatically just switch back to Swedish? Yeah, I switch back. Yeah, okay, and, and everybody else just has to figure it out. I don't know, but when you speak to the person directly, like mm -hmm. to Eric or 
Dolly, uh, trying to speak Swedish because it's easier to 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 say what you want. Uh, but if you're in a group, you're trying to keep it in English just to so everybody understands. Easier to communicate that way. Yeah, um, I know we we interviewed uh, Tom, uh, Thomas Bordalo um, after the the you know the pro, the dev prospect and stuff like that, and he he was saying that like uh, he was actually really impressed with your English uh, so far and stuff like that. Um, you know, is it kind of crazy where like, you know, like, especially going back to that prospect game where like you and like Bordalo and then like Ozzy, like you guys are going to be the, the future of the sharks. What's that feel like? Hopefully it is. And you know, you want to try to yeah communicate with those guys and get a, like, uh, get a feeling in the society, like, uh, outside of hockey, how they are as a person. And it's always fun to to speak to new guys on on the team. What's it What's it like heading into? You get drafted in. I think the draft was what in July this year, and then yeah. Dev Camp is in August. What's it like heading into Dev Camp in North America? Had you ever been to North America before? Yeah, I've been there. Just to okay. Canada and Toronto, Montreal before. Oh, nice Toronto. Yes, there we go. Get the get the get the plug in. So what's it What's it What's it like? heading into dev camp flying away knowing that because you said you said your goal is to make the sharks right is was that your mindset as soon as you got drafted yeah it was so you're heading into dev camp what, what's it like going in knowing that all of these guys are also have the same goal for me are you trying to just fit in with the guys or are you trying to blow the doors off them and, and be the man what's your kind of like how, how does how does it work heading into one of these i think my goal was just to try to you know play my game because i don't get drafted me because of my game and just trying to yeah get better from that and eventually like trying to get a spot on the team does it okay so dev camp comes then rookie camp comes when did you kind of think you knew like hey i might be able to make the sharks i think after rookie camp into dev uh, into main camp and like started to feel better better by my game my mm -hmm. game was uh, adapting better to the to the smaller eyes and uh, after a while i was like could make some plays there too so i thought it was getting better and better and from that i think i thought i had a shot they say like you know like the adapt adapting from the big eyes to the small eyes like what's what's the biggest thing with that is just like there's less space to work with and like defenders are on you a lot quicker what's what's kind of the process of trying to adapt to the smaller north american ice First of all, you you play as way better player than you feel do, and so that's a big difference. And those guys also know how to like um, get ice smaller and tighter for you. So you have to be very aware of what you're gonna do with the puck before you get it. And the small details, the small split seconds you get with the puck, and I think those things are the most important. I think you you should you should be fine though because I don't know if you've ever spoken at length about your own game, but I think you being a high IQ kind of guy, I think the transition would be easier if you had to say, would you agree with that, or do you think it, it's still going to take some time? I think yeah, it, like I said, I think I adapted more and more every day, and it got easier and easier for me. What was it? Did it make it easier because you got to play on a line with Tomas Hurdle, <laughs> who's just. <laughs> Yeah, he obviously make every player play better. So, uh, yeah, just to play with him made it way easier, of course. All right, guys, before we get back to our Eklund interview, we want to take a quick break and talk to you guys about DirecTV Stream. Does this sound familiar to you? You've got one device that lets you catch the game live. Another lets you stream your favorite shows. You're watching sports highlights on your phone. You've got your neighbor's best friends logging for the good stuff. But I want to tell you a simple way to get all your entertainment you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called DirecTV Stream. It brings live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before. So you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes. No need to buy another device ever again. And the best part, there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with DirecTV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible devices required. Content varies by package. Who? Okay, here let's 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 throw a fun question here. We, we we've been grilling here for a second. Obviously, you just turned nineteen. Uh, did you have a favorite hockey player growing up? Pavel Datsuk was a favorite. Oh, mine. okay. 
See, you can't play against him now, though. Did you have? Do you have a? Do you have a favorite player that's still in the league, or have you played against one of your favorites? Yeah, like Backstrom. Like, oh, yeah, he's real. He's real cool. And yeah, some, and uh, I don't know. Yeah, Backstrom is one big player I looked up to. What was it like? You know, it's like you you make the Sharks, of course. Um, you know, uh, you know, opening night roster and stuff, and like. You know, you skating out of the big shark head and stuff like that. Were you just like, you know, and there's actually fans in the stands this year and stuff like that. What was that that feeling like for you? Just like the culmination of your whole life working towards this moment. And you you actually did it. Yeah, like it was unreal from the first. Yeah, like skating out on the the shark tank there and the the fans and everything. You know, uh, you know, used to that, and uh, it was it was kind of crazy actually. You, you can be honest. Were you nervous before the first game? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> uh, of course, <laughs> playing up with the like in the Herschel line there, and uh, yeah, a little bit, but it got better and better. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure that first shift uh, when you hop over the boards was a little interesting. You're probably like, "Oh my god, this is happening!" Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What uh, are the guys in the locker room? Because there's lots of rookies that made the team this year, right? Is there are the guys in the locker room chirping you, making fun of you guys, just trying to ease you back in, or are they just kind of staying away and letting you be nervous on your own? I don't know. I think it'd be good to all of us. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, everybody knows the feeling of the first game is playing there, and they know what we're going through. So it was good to us. Uh, Brent Burns gave you the nickname the Gecko, which I guess you don't really like very much. But there's not too much you're gonna do when Brent Burns uh, gives you a nickname, just because the dude's a you know like he's been in the league for a thousand years and he's never missed a game and stuff. So like, what's that dynamic like with like a guy like Brent Burns and you know like Logan Couture and, and you know Thomas Hurdle who who played for a long time? Yeah, it was really cool and good experience for for mm -hmm. us young guys too. Uh, to look up to have a role models to to always see every day and uh, yeah it was a little nice nickname there gecko <laughs> and, uh, yeah I heard that did he day. uh did he bring any like of his i don't know if you see like brent burns is famous for his grilling did he like bring any of his uh like deer or something like that they grilled on <laughs> yeah i saw a little bit of some videos and some uh, some photos of it and uh he told me a little bit of some barbecues and stuff. So, yeah, I heard good stories. Did you get to see what's in his backpack? <laughs> Does, I assume Actually, he just keeps like a small a small child in there or something. I don't know. It's it's a it's huge backpack. Big. Yeah, it's heavy though. I can't tell that. <laughs> <laughs> good, good to know. He's probably just using it for weights because he's in such good shape. He's always working out all the time. <laughs> yeah, it is. it is. How did you... Uh, obviously, we heard about your birthday going to Ikea. Uh, and you went with Dalen and Jasper Weatherby. How, how did you become friends with uh, Jasper? Yeah, I think we, we were, first of all, we won rookies at the rookie tournament and uh, the whole camp, I think. Mm -hmm. And in that way, you get closer, you know. Uh, like, we get went out to dinners and stuff, and he introduced me to Chipotle and, and stuff like that. So get uh, close to each other. And in that way, we get we get good friends from there. What's uh rate the IKEA meatballs on a scale of one to ten? How are they? They were actually real similar to Swedish ones, like oh good uh, nine or something like that. Oh wow, <laughs> wow! I was actually shocked how good it was. So my wife, she likes the lingonberry jam. Like we have to always when we go, we have to like fill the car up with the the lingonberry jam whenever we go to IKEA. But oh, um, nice. yes, what's the Chipotle order now that you've Trying to throw everything there. <laughs> there you go. Uh, it's uh, have a good bowl, uh, some rice, some chicken, queso, some uh, lettuce. Yeah, you just fill it out there. There you go. Do was, you pay, was, you get the guac. You got you're on that rookie salary. Do you get the guac, or you got to save the money? <laughs> yeah, I go with the guac. There you go. <laughs> Is uh, was Chipotle the go-to for you when you needed something to eat, or do you have a different fave? Oh, it was good actually. Chipotle is kind of it's a good spot, you know. Uh, it's kind of healthy too. Like you can get it's good food. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, we're very different 
uh, from Sweden. So it is fun to to eat something you know you're used to. Obviously, you were uh, you were in the states for for a few months stretch there. What did you miss about Sweden? Food or home or anything? What did you miss when you were gone for that first like stretch of time? Uh, I don't know. It was like maybe the food in the beginning. Cause yeah. you, uh, no, in the, like in the, in the middle there, uh, but I don't know. It was it was kind of good the whole way through. Yeah, you're you're just happy to be happy to be over there playing and stuff like that. And obviously, I think you being on the Sharks next year is probably going to happen. So I guess you just gotta soak in all the Swedish stuff you can <laughs> right now before you head back. Right? Are you going to go back to San Jose next summer, or are you going to wait for training camp? <sighs> that's that's not clear yet. So I okay. can't. I don't know. <laughs> no, totally, totally fair. Um, obviously, you're back in Sweden now. Are you? Were you? Are you getting back up? Is there like a transition period? Or are you just as soon as uh, U Garden is ready to go, you're just gonna hop back in there? And and have you had talks with them about what your role is gonna be on the team? Yeah, like I'm, I started practice with them uh, last week, uh, this week. Uh, uh, so we got two two practices in there, and we have a game next. Thursday, I think. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, Thursday. So um, I'm playing right away. Oh, good. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you're going to go back and expect it to kind of soak up big minutes and stuff like that. What's kind of the one thing you want to work on the most while you're while you're in Sweden before you head back to the Sharks next season? Yeah, like this decision-making, how, how fast it has to be. And sometimes uh, we get the puck in the walls and stuff like that, how, how to be good at uh, at making solutions out of that and those things I gotta work on. Have you talked to Marcus Sorensen who played for the Sharks for a bunch, you know, I think it was like four years with the Sharks or so. Um, have you got a chance to talk to him about uh, like NHL life and stuff since he's he's done it for a while? Yeah, we're actually on the same line right now. So. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> we were fun. Yeah, we yeah. talked a little bit. Uh, you know, he knows a lot of personal people down, uh, around there, so it was fun to, you know, catch up with him about it. What, uh, obviously, they, you played all nine games uh, before they had to make a decision. Is that is that a morning conversation where they call you into the office, or is it just a phone call, or, or kind of what what's that morning like? Is it is it just a crazy whirlwind of emotions, and then you're on a plane in a couple of days? Yeah, it was a little meeting we had in the morning there. Uh, yeah, right away there, uh, and then. I think I got one day, and next day I was gone. They're going on the plane. Yeah, and you had you had dinner, I think, with uh, with Dalian right before you left. What was was he just telling you kind of what he went through? Because obviously his story um, is pretty public, where he got sent around and then went back to All Skin for a bit. So did he? Was he just trying to help you out and like keep your head up, or did you just guys have a good talk about life? I don't know. We had a. I think we just had a good talk. You know. It's trying to look in the future and how it could be and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, good dinner at at the usual pregame meal spot. So it was good. What's the what's the usual pregame meal spot? It's like pasta at Molino, I think you call it. Mm-hmm. it was in, I think it's done in Cam- Campbell. And it's a good spot. <laughs> I can tell from your face that you're like, yeah, that, that's that's real good. Is that your usual go-to uh, meal, pasta before games? Yeah, I like that actually. That's good. Hey guys, I know you're enjoying listening to our interview with William Eklund, but we got to pay the bills, and one of those bills is being paid by Built Bar, the tasty protein bar that tastes like a chocolate bar. And Thanksgiving's right around the corner. All the good food, all the treats. There's so many of them. But maybe you want a dessert that isn't quite as bad for you. It isn't full of so so full of calories and sugar. It's a perfect time for Built Bar, which could be the new holiday dessert. One slice of pie has like 500 calories, especially if you get some whipped cream and ice cream on there. Built Bars are only 130 calories and only 4 grams of sugar with plenty of protein. Replace the coconut cream pie with a coconut Built Bar. Replace other pies, other Built Bars, raspberry, double chocolate, German chocolate. So many options for you. Low calorie, low carb, low fat, high protein. Covered in 100% real chocolate makes them taste really good. Built Bar is a great option for when you're hungry. If Thanksgiving isn't going to be here fast enough for you, grab a Built Bar in the meantime. Share some with your family. Maybe there's an awkward turn at the, at the dinner table and everybody's quiet. Just bust out some Built Bars. 
New surprises are happening all month. Limited time flavors arriving at Built.com regularly, so check the site often. There's nothing like a Built Bar Black Friday. Mark your calendar. Black Friday will be a huge event with all sorts of surprises. Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKED15, and you get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Um, outside of hockey, so like, I mean, I assume, you know, you've been in the gym because I, that's kind of the always everyone's just like, oh, he needs to spend more time in the gym and stuff. But when you're not in the gym and you're not playing hockey, what do you like to do outside of hockey? I like pedal tennis. It's pedal really tennis, all right. Yeah, it's really popular here in Sweden. Uh, so I'm usually doing that the whole summer and uh, trying to improve my golf game a little bit. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get it back next, next summer. That's a popular activity with the Sharks and the Barracuda guys. <laughs> Is golf, did you golf a lot when you were at uh, Dev Camp and, and Prospect Camp? No, not that much, actually. It was so tired every day. <laughs> yeah. I can actually do it, but yeah, I would try to get it more in there. How's uh how's your game right now? What do you what are you shooting? What's your handicap? Oh, I'm bad. Actually. <laughs> I'm bad. Like 30. Oh, okay. So you're still learning. That's okay. Yeah, I'm still learning. I'm still going up. Yeah. So uh, I know. Jacob Magna apparently is the best uh golfer on the CUDA, so maybe you'll have to uh, next summer hit him up for some tips and stuff going and you know so he, maybe he'll, he'll show you or he might just take your money so be careful with that too so um so yeah so you working on your golf game uh are you like a big movie guy do you like to kind of relax and watch movies or what was the last thing you you, you streamed or watched i don't know mode of family i like that nice Good okay show. and um yeah, I don't know. It's it's from time to time. Sometimes, you know, you have your you have your moments when you're in into a lot of series and movies and stuff. Yeah, what uh, what's your pregame music? These are the these are the questions that we ask everybody because we want to pry and figure out what what makes you tick. What's your pregame playlist looking like? Oh, so smooth, you know, Swedish Swedish rap or something like that. Sweet Swedish rap. Give, yeah. give us a name. I don't think many of our listeners will know what Swedish rap is. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> so many different. <laughs> Drake is a popular one, too. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. The, uh, obviously, I'm 33, and so we always ask the guys, we're like, do you listen to Lil Wayne? Because that's what I listened to before when I played pro basketball and stuff, and everybody's like, I don't even know who that is. <laughs> so. I actually know him. You what? I actually know him. Oh, okay, perfect. There we go. I don't feel I don't feel as old now. Um, are you are you a pregame nap guy? Yeah, just uh, just a little bit, like 25, 30 minutes, something like that. Nothing big. Oh, that's that's not that's not bad then. I know I know some guys aren't. Some guys are. Some guys take like two hour naps, which I don't really understand. But that that's up to them. Uh, really important question here: Do you wear socks in your skates? Yeah. Yeah. It's, okay. <laughs> You're not. You're normal. You're normal. It's it's fine. Uh, and your tape job on your stick is it is it looking ugly or is it just a pretty standard down the middle one? I think it's pretty standard. Heel to toe, with the white uh, white white heel to toe and uh, little puck marks on it like that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, pretty standard. That's not bad. And then just like a normal knob at the top. Not one of these guys that has like a ball of tape on the top. Yeah, normally normal top there. No. Nice, 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 nice. What, uh, growing up in, in Sweden, how old were you when you kind of were like, okay, maybe I have a chance to to go pro uh, SHL or NHL? I don't know. Um, that was obviously my goal from from like when I started. Um, just trying to get better every day. And I think when I got to like 16, 17, something like that, I thought to like, yeah, it's getting better and better, and getting getting good chances, good opportunities now to to prove myself. Nice. And then obviously you played in the SHL, uh, 17, 18 years old. What's it like being? What's it like being a kid still and playing in in the top Swedish league? Yeah, it's it's really good for me. You know, getting the opportunity every day to to play against uh, grown men and learn from that and learn from. The players on my team too. 
Yeah. Do you, do you think playing in the SHL helped you prepare for the draft and, and making the jump to the NHL faster than if you didn't play in SH, SHL? Maybe you're you're in a lower league or went to college or something like that. Yeah, I think so. Um, because it was good for me to play against grown, grown men, and you know, you had to adapt to that level too. Mm-hmm. So it was it was good for my game in the long term. Nice and uh, World Juniors. Obviously, now that you're back in Sweden, uh, yeah. is that something that's on your uh, is that something that's on your radar? Is that something you've had conversations about yet? Yeah, it, it is. Uh, obviously, I want to want to play for my country, and uh, it would be cool to play there in in Edmonton too. So, yeah, we're, we're real fun. I don't. Uh, I don't think Lucas Raymond though is going uh, to be on the team. Though that, that might. That might. Uh, that might hurt a little bit, right? Yeah, it's he's doing good, doing good there out there. So, yeah, he's he's still playing. Yeah, um, yeah, it, it's gonna be fun because you know you think like guys like Bortolo is probably gonna be on the team USA, um, Gushin, you know, who's gonna be on like uh, probably on Team Russia and stuff like that. Like, it's gonna be fun to kind of. Uh, um, you know, play against these guys. Uh, don't listen to Kyle though. He's just a sad Canadian. He's still up. He, he won't admit it, but he's still upset that the U S lost to, uh, or that Canada lost to the U S last year. So, but uh, what's it going to be like, you know, playing against these guys who you're going to be playing against late, you know, or playing with soon. So. Yeah. You know, uh, if you get a chance on the team, you know, yeah, it will be fun. And uh, to play those against those guys, you know, b- boards and, and Gushin, uh, Always fun to have a little, you know, it game in the game, what you call it. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully it will be fun. Are you, uh, are you in line to be the captain of Sweden, or is that not for you to decide? <laughs> it's not for me to decide, but uh, yeah, I don't know yet. <laughs> well, t- oh, we 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 think you should be. So that'll be uh, <laughs> that that'd be awesome. Um, what? Uh, Obviously, you're back. Are you? Uh, you're staying at your parents for now. Is that a? Is that a full? Is that the rest of the year arrangement? And just eat free dinners every night, or are you gonna get your own place in Sweden? Uh, I actually just bought my new apartment uh, yesterday. Actually. Oh, nice! Congrats. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we're heading there soon, uh, but might might still come here for free dinners and stuff. <laughs> that's that's the way to do it. Have your own place so you can relax at night, and then be like. Oh, can you do my laundry? Yeah, or can you I come by for, for dinner and drop off the laundry? Yes, that's the way to go. So, yes. Um, one last thing I want to ask about uh, when you were on the Sharks. So the the Saturday COVID game when they played the Jets, what was that day like when you're just like all these positive tests are popping up and there's just the chaos of like, are we even going to play? Who's going to be playing? You know, like all the Barracuda guys coming. What was that day like? Yeah, it was... It's kind of crazy, actually. You know, you didn't know what to to expect of the of the day of the game. You know, you want to keep everybody as healthy as possible, and you know, it was yeah, it was a tough day. You didn't know if you're gonna play or what was going to happen. So you was just trying to do the best out of the situation. The uh, yeah, I can only imagine because then they have to call up a bunch of guys and stuff like that. Does it come down to somebody like you to have to step up and play? play better obviously they looked at you as the future of the franchise and stuff like that and you weren't out is are they having conversations with you about like hey william we need a really big night from you that kind of thing or is it just go out and play yeah yes no i mean let's just go out and play and yeah do you uh what'd you do with your first uh your first point puck is it is it in sweden or is it staying with you did you give it to your mom it's actually at my grandpa's house right now it's He's collecting all my stuff. He's been doing that since I was like, I don't know, 10 years old or something. He loves everything there. So my first game stick and my my puck is there. So, yeah. And he's got a jersey probably hanging up somewhere now too. A bunch of stuff. <laughs> yeah, he's going uh, to need a bigger room. You got to buy him like a, a special shed or something like that <laughs> to, to keep all your stuff. Were you... Uh, have you thought about scoring your first NHL goal or cuz I know you've got four assists have you or is it you gripping the stick a little tight or is it just something that's going to happen I think it's going to happen I, like <laughs> if I get the chance 
yeah, hopefully I will get it and uh, you know and then I yeah if it's come it's gonna come you know if you create chances it's it's come coming For if you sure. could choose one goalie to score it on who would it be <laughs> I don't know because you almost got Hellebuck like you had a really nice move and almost got him but yeah I don't know it's we have a Swedish goalie Who's the Swedish goalie? Robin Lehner? I guess he's a Swedish goalie. And Vegas plays San Jose a lot. Um what uh so what's your what's your goals before we get you out of here? What's your what's your goals for, for this next year? Obviously you're with U Garden. Are you trying to uh work on your own game, trying to help the team and stuff like that? What's kind of what's your big picture view heading out now that you're back in Sweden? Yeah, right now it's just to be with my team and, and trying to like climb in the in the league and get better every day here in New Garden and, and see our team develop here and hopefully grab, grab a playoff spot and, you know, win a goal is always obviously uh, like a big goal for me. And the goal is also to be in the World champ- in Championship and mm-hmm. yeah, I want to be a, a part of that. Nice. Last question here. What's your favorite thing about hockey? Just you know, uh, you got to see new things every day. Yeah, it's you can be new cities, new new stuff for everything. It's so fun. Nice. That's a good. That's a good answer. I got one more. Are you a big chirper on the ice? <laughs> no, I'm not. No, <laughs> I'm bad at the language right now. So, <laughs> oh, it'll get better. So, uh, <laughs> who won the Sharks was surprisingly uh, was more of a chirper than you thought. I don't know. I don't know. I'm so focused. I, I in my like in my own games. I don't. I don't hear anything. Uh, oh. I know Merkley is a big chirper, which is surprising for someone as little as Merkley is. But yeah, I know he's a big chirper. He does. He he can mix it up a little bit. So <laughs> I like that. I like that you're just in your own your own zone, just working on it. Um, yeah. We should. Uh, we we need to petition the Sharks to get you better photos next year. Because they made you look like a small child, and then we saw the U Gardens photos where you look like an adult. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, "Come on, San Jose, what are you doing?" I don't I know if you them. noticed that too. I saw them too. <laughs> they, they were not. Uh, They're not the best. I was like, "Well, I guess this guy is 15 years old." So, yes. um, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully they they do better on that next year. Uh, do you have anything? Obviously, uh, we don't want to keep you too long here. It's it's getting late in Sweden, um, but we'll give you time to talk about anything you want. If you want to talk about your pet or your new house or your team or anything you want go nuts we're not going to stop you i think i'm good actually what's a good <laughs> good speech good yeah it was good perfect um thanks william we really really appreciate it um thanks to uh the people that helped this uh well we'll say well, thanks to your mom for helping coordinate this uh, she <laughs> yes. seems like a gr- she seems like a great lady um she loves uh we make uh we make a lot of memes uh from for our account and she likes a lot of the william eklund memes so I don't know if you've seen them, but you can ask her to show you. <laughs> they're, they're pretty funny. Um, you've seen them? The memes? Yeah. Yeah, yeah some of them. I'm yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we apologize if anybody's made fun of you for us putting you on the Teletubby son. Uh, <laughs> that was good. I like that. Yeah. Okay. We, we apologize if this causes you. Let us know if anybody uh, gets on you about it, and uh, uh, we'll make sure to make better ones going forward. But the Teletubby meme one was too, was too perfect. Um, thank you, William. Really appreciate it. Good luck this season in uh, U Garden in Sweden, and obviously um, going forward in your career. Hopefully, we can uh, do this again. Yeah, thank you. Big thanks to William Eklund for coming on the show. Uh, praise be to our Lord and Savior, William E Five. Really wild that he knows about the memes. Uh, really, just blew our mind that I, I guess like people are showing him or his mom showing him or something. I don't. I don't know. Uh, really surreal. Super nice. Um, really looking forward to what he's going to do this season and hopefully we can get him back on. But if you would like to tell us how cool and awesome we are for getting, getting E5 on the pod, you can let us know at Lockdown Sharks on Twitter, uh, Facebook, Instagram. If that's where you get your stuff, you can let us know there as well. JD puts up all of our work so you can check it out. Lockdown Sharks on both of those. If you'd like to subscribe and watch William Eklund with us, uh, and other special guests like Chase, the small child. Uh, you can do that. Is it Jackson? It's Jackson. <laughs> uh, only been doing this for two years. 
how do I know which one is which? Um, I don't know, the kids. You can subscribe to YouTube. Uh, that way you can see us. Lots of special guests like William Eklund, Orrin Jackson, <laughs> whichever one you prefer. Uh, if you would like to email us, you can do that at lockdownsharks at gmail.com. If you haven't, thank you for your service. Uh, and I don't think we've actually got one in a while. Uh, not since Travis and, uh, and Paul. Um, I still feel bad for calling Paul really old. Uh, I apologize, my guy. Um, please keep being on the list. We're, we're not, we're not actually mean. We just, we're just idiots. Can't you confirm. Like check out this, <laughs> this idiot. Uh, he's at my fry hole on Twitter. Uh, this idiot is at Kyle Demetrius. And thank you for making us your first listen. If you're new to the podcast or just checking us out, uh, thanks again for checking us out. We'll be back tomorrow with a abs review, which was a, and then a preview of the, uh, wild game. So yeah, good times. Good times we had by all. So, or just listen to William Eklund interview. Like just do that like 500 times. That'd be yeah. great. So tell give us a review. Tell us, we did yeah, the, tell, give us five stars for E5 baby. Yes.